Good evening and welcome to Sunset News this Sunday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Glenora Shipura. In the news tonight, a 48-year-old woman reportedly died on Friday afternoon at the Onambungulu village in the Omutea area of the Oshikoda region when she choked on a piece of meat served at a memorial service she was attending. Now, according to the police, after she swallowed the piece of meat, the woman began choking and coughing and then collapsed. She was rushed to the Onanjokwe hospital where she was declared dead. In our next story, academic Dr. Hode Rirako has justified why he is the rightful chief of the Ovahero Traditional Authority, saying the process to coronate him was meticulous. Rirako was coronated as chief on Saturday in Okahanda. Let's take a look. Now, one cardinal and very, very important of that part of, 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 of tradition and culture is the rituals that takes a paramount chief from the time that the person has been selected to the day that we are witnessing today, which is the actual coronation or inauguration. Now, just to give you a bit of information, maybe a bit of synopsis of what has been taken, what you are seeing here, you have come at the tail end of the actual commemoration, I mean a coronation. You came at the, at the tailgate of it. This event started already last Sunday with, with five uh, traditional high priests of the Hereros connecting the spirits of our departed leaders and ancestors with the person that they have chosen, which is the person is standing in front of you. Now, we went to sacred places, so different sacred traditions have been conducted, paving the way to receive the masses today on Friday, where we are now only celebrating what has been partaking over a course of about a whole week. And I know in yesterday's years, an event like this will also take series of weeks. And it's a very rich traditional culture. You don't coronate a Herero leader going through a wishy wishy type of a ceremony, a hush hush type of a ceremony. There are rituals that you follow meticulously and religiously to exhaustion. As political parties are getting the ball rolling ahead of the 2024 presidential and national assembly elections, the Popular Democratic Movement, PDM, held a mega rally in Rundu on Saturday, which was attended by thousands. PDM President McHenry Venani says old age pension grants are sustaining homesteads in villages, something which he says needs to change. This video is by Kenya Kambowe. That is why we are poor. We are poor here in Kabango and the rest of the country because people are stealing the money. People are eating the money. Yes. We are tired of the thieves. Yes. Therefore, we must stand together, yes. resolute in action, yes. Yes. to be able to combat our future and to win our future together. Because we can no longer allow young people living from old age pension. All the young people in the villages are being sustained by the old age pension. Because Oiruana. Anamari, Anamari, the future is green. I dare say it, that the future of our country should be a green future, particularly in the age where we can visibly see and feel. Next up, we'll take a look at what made headlines this week in sub-Saharan Africa. Reuters has more. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Here's what's been making the business news in Sub-Saharan Africa this week. 
Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi wrapped up a three-country African tour on Thursday, in which trade was the focus. The first visit by an Iranian president in a decade took in Kenya, Uganda and Zimbabwe. In Kampala, Raisi signed four agreements with President Yoweri Museveni and said Iran stood ready to share its experience regarding a planned 60,000 barrel per day oil refinery. The government of Zambia, Africa's second largest copper producer, said on Friday that it aims to pick a buyer for Mapani copper mines by the end of the month. Sources said China's Zijian Mining and Norinco Group, South Africa's Sibanye Stillwater and an investment vehicle owned by ex-Glencore officials had been shortlisted. Nigeria's Senate on Thursday speedily approved a request by President Bola Tinubu to borrow $800 million from the World Bank. That's to cushion the impact of high fuel prices after Tinubu ended a popular but costly petrol subsidy. South Africa's ESCOM has said it will continue to implement Stage 6 scheduled power cuts over the weekend, its highest level on record as cold weather increases demand. The state power utility had implemented lower levels of blackouts in recent weeks, which had helped boost investor confidence and lift the rand. And finally, Ivory Coast has stopped selling cocoa export contracts for the 2023 to 2024 season. The head of the country's sector regulator has said, after heavy rains battered and flooded farms in recent weeks. With cocoa prices currently at record levels due to supply concerns, the suspension of sales will come as a blow to a country that relies on cocoa, according to the UN, for 40% of its export earnings. In our Story of the Day segment, we take a look at Namibia's Global Safety Index for 2023. All this on the other side of the break. This is Africa. Good morning. Hey, it's Aina Raisa Kleo alongside Diana Master. in uh, the ANC conference in December, so uh, we are starting off with the cycling. Uh. Africa, good morning. Do have a lovely... Minister, Minister Monica Mchangwa has said that... With the soccer, the English Premier League continued the biggest game being... On that note, it is all our love, all our life. Namibia has bettered its safety stance globally, according to the latest Global Safety Index. Yolanda Nell has more. According to the 2023 Global Peace Index, Namibia is the seventh safest country in Africa and has impressively improved its global safety rank from 68th in 2022 to 56th in 2023. However, the occurrence of muggings does warrant caution, especially when managing cash near ATMs. Most of these crimes typically take place beyond the city centre and the police often find taxi drivers complicit in these criminal activities. Activities. Just like Senegal, the U.S. State Department has placed Namibia under a Level 1 travel advisory, indicating that the country is relatively safe to visit. Namibia comes highly recommended by so solo female travelers and is considered one of the safest African nations for solo journeys. African countries who snatched the top spots are Mauritius, Botswana and Sierra Leone. Neighbour South Africa is ranked 33rd safest on the continent and fell 8 spots, ranking 130th globally. This is the 17th edition of the Global Peace Index, which ranks 163 independent states and territories according to their level of peacefulness. Produced by the Institute for Economic and Peace, the GPI is the world's leading measure of global peacefulness. This report presents the most comprehensive data-driven analysis to date on trends in peace, its economic value and how to develop peaceful societies. This year's results found that the average level of global peacefulness deteriorated by 0.42%. This is the 13th deterioration in peacefulness in the last 15 years, with 84 countries improving and 79 deteriorating in peacefulness. Now, in economic news after the break, we look at the army in South Africa that is deployed to a number of provinces 
after trucks were set on fire. Do stay tuned. Welcome to My.NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss My.NA Cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Ranging from current affairs, community stories, local index remains unchanged while overall. Thank you for joining the show that highlights the news making headlines in the land of the brave and beyond. Always major victorious. Getting into our economic news, South Africa deployed the army in four of its provinces after at least 21 trucks carrying goods were set on fire in various parts of the country in the span of five days. Now the photos and videos from this story are from the Truck and Fright Facebook page. Now in numerous instances, armed men forced drivers out of their vehicles before setting the trucks alight in the middle of major roads. Now, truck driver Nkoshana from KwaZulu-Natal, who transports fuel to various filling stations in the country, said he felt relieved. The police minister said last week there is a possibility that the truck burnings are economic sabotage against South Africa. The police were hunting for at least 12 people. The truck burnings appear to have started last week Sunday, the second anniversary of the start of the 2021 protest Police said they had no evidence that this week's torching of trucks was connected to the 2021 unrest or to Zuma, but the decision in Zuma's court case clearly has put the country on edge. Now, the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, CBAM, is the European Union's measure to encourage countries where it sources imports to adopt cleaner manufacturing. The CBAM, which goes into force on a traditional basis in October, introduces a carbon tax on exports to the EU, but the measure has elicited concern in Africa, which counts Europe as a major export market. Now, a study carried out by the African Climate Foundation and the London School of Economics suggests that the CBAM's economic repercussions will be far-reaching and most strongly felt in Africa. Their modeling based on 87 euros per ton suggests that the CBAM would lead to around 200, sorry, $25 billion in losses based on 2021 GDP levels, nearly four times higher than what the EU gave to Africa in development assistance in 2021. Now, products such as iron and steel, cement, aluminium, fertilizer, hydrogen and electricity, which make up a significant portion of Africa's exports to Europe, will be the first victims of the mechanism. After 2026, the CBAM scope will extend to other products, potentially leading to bigger economic loss. Now let's take a look at our financial indicators. The Namibian dollar trades against the British pound at 23.63, against the euro at 20.30, and against the US dollar at 18.09. Two Namibian dollars and 53 cents gets you one Chinese yuan. Gold and Brent crude oil went down, while copper and platinum went up on the commodities. Now Brent crude oil trading at 2.27%. Going for 79 US dollars and 73 cents per barrel. In international news, we take a look at the last ship that left the Ukraine port ahead of the Black Sea grain deal deadline. We get into this on the other side of the break. Hello and welcome. 
and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson. Kauraita. In replay, Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour, Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and... Let's take a look at our international news. The last ship to travel under a UN brokered deal that allows the safe Black Sea export of Ukrainian grain left the port of Odessa early on Sunday, July 16th, ahead of a deadline to extend the agreement, according to a Reuters witness and MarineTraffic.com. Now, Russia has not agreed to register any new ships since June 27, and the initiative will expire on Monday, July 17th, unless Moscow agrees to extend it. Ukrainian officials did not immediately comment on whether the ship, the Turkish flag TQ Samson, had left Odessa. In our next story, a Libyan environmental group has been active in moving endangered turtle eggs from the beach, where they are in danger of holiday makers or four-wheel vehicles to safe locations. Now, since 2011, Edma for Nature Conservation has been conserving turtle nests and other species in Libya's coastal city, Zuwara, west of Tripoli, to protect them from extinction. Almost daily, volunteers search the beach for the mother turtle to find the nest before unearthing the eggs and relocating it to the uninhabited faraway island. After the break, we get into your weather predictions. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. Let's take a look at the weather predictions for tomorrow across the country. In the northern regions, the weather conditions are clear throughout the day. The maximum temperature ranges from 24 to 28 degrees, while the minimum temperature ranges from 8 to 11 degrees. In the central region, the weather conditions are clear throughout the day. The maximum temperature ranges from 23 to 26 degrees, while the minimum temperature ranges from 8 and 11 degrees. In the southern regions, the weather conditions are clear throughout the day. The maximum temperature ranges from 23 to 29 degrees, while the minimum temperature ranges from 10 to 17 degrees. And in the coastal regions, the weather conditions are clear and the maximum temperature ranges from 26 to 33 degrees, while the minimum temperature ranges from 16 to 20 degrees. After the, after the break, we take a look at our sports news. Welcome to MyDotNA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Master. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss MyDotNA Cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Let's take a look at your sports news. Heated game between the defending champions Mighty Gunners and the first edition of the MTC Cup champions, the Namibian Correctional Service. This video is by Frida Moloto. Moving on to our next story, Australia centre Len E.K. Tao faces a race to be fit for the World Cup after fracturing a shoulder blade in the 34-31 Rugby Championships defeat by Argentina on Saturday 
Ikitao, who faces between six to eight weeks out, collided with Puma's fall back Emiliano Boffelli at the six minute and went off 12 minutes later. The 24 year old had scored the opening try before being forced off. BBC reports that Australia's first match in the World Cup is against Georgia on 9th September. Igitao underwent tests after the match which confirmed the fracture. He has proven to be a key player for Australia since making his international debut in 2021, but his absence was exploited by Argentina. After the break, we get into your news highlights. Do stay with us. Hello and welcome to today's Sports Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson Kauraika. In replay, Namibia, who had won the toss for the first time on this tour. Good day, everyone. Time for international sports news. Starting off with tennis news, both on the WTA for women's and... Is Aina Raizakaya alongside Diana Master? In uh, the ANC conference in December, so uh, we are starting off with the cycling. Yeah. Africa, good morning. Do have a lovely minister. Minister Monica Mchangwa has said that with the soccer, the English Premier League continued the biggest game being. On that note, it is all our love, all our life. You are still watching Sunset News, and if you have just joined us, here are your news highlights. A 48-year-old woman reportedly died on Friday afternoon at the Onambungulu village in the Omutea area of the Shikota region when she choked on a piece of meat served at a memorial service she was attending. According to the police, after she swallowed the piece of meat, the woman began choking and coughing and then collapsed. Namibia is the seventh safest country in Africa and has and has improved its global safety rank from 68th in 2022 to 56th in 2023, according to the 2023 Global Peace Index. Just like Senegal, the U.S. State Department has placed Namibia under a level one travel advisory, indicating that the country is relatively safe to visit. Namibia comes highly recommended by solo female travelers and is considered one of the safest African nations for solo journeys. Australia centre Len Ikitao faces a race to be fit for the World Cup after fracturing a shoulder blade in the 34-31 Rugby Championship defeat by Argentina on Saturday. Ikitao, who faces between six to eight weeks out, collided with Puma's fullback Emiliano Boffelli in the sixth minute and went off 12 minutes later. The 24-year-old had scored the opening try before being forced off. And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all the animate platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, oneup2.com, Sunset News screens on DSTV Channel 285 and GoTV Channel 25 every weekday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. I am Glenora Shipura. This has been Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. <laughs>